This light is the sort of light you'd expect to see in an all-terrain vehicle, but in reality this one comes from a very unusual location. This was given to me by a local fisherman called Jiffy. It's from a fishing boat, a commercial fishing boat that operated in the Irish Sea, well still operates in the Irish Sea, but this light is no longer operating in the Irish Sea. Let me show you why. If I turn it on, half of it lights. The other half was lighting earlier on, but it's cut out. So I've tested it. It seems to have voltage regulation. It accommodates from about 12 to 24 volts. The power rating of this is effectively 2 watts per LED, which gives the whole fixture a rating of about 80 watts, with each half section being 40 watts. It's interesting to note that it has a couple of different types of LEDs. It's got the fairly highly focused center point LEDs here, and then it's got a broader spread of LEDs at the edge. So let's see if we can open this up and see what's inside and how it fared in the Irish Sea because the Irish Sea is a ferocious place. Not just full of lots of salty water, but lots of salty water thrashing around violently. So let's, uh, I've already looked out the correct screwdriver bit. Let's unscrew the end cap and see if any of that salty water got in to the light fitting. Jiffy said that the swapped from using these to the broader LED floodlights and they were just much better because these are very directional. They actually project a beam, which you'd expect for a sort of like an all-terrain vehicle. But not so ideal for people working on a fishing boat uh, pulling nets up over the side. So one of the things I'd expect for this is water ingress, salty water ingress causing corrosion. But having said that, the inside looks unusually immaculate. And I'm taking these screws out. I don't even know if that's going to give me decent access to the inside. I'd expect it to be an extrusion with uh, the components sliding out. That is not easily coming out. I think there's another screw in there. There is another screw. All right, okay, tell you what, I'm going to have to take this out. There's another screw in there. Right, one moment, please. Oh, this is not helpful. The end has come off, revealing a set of rubber seal then, but also lots of potting compound then. This is kind of big to actually fit in the bench here. So now I'm going to have to try and remove... The circuit boards look as though they're probably screwed onto this aluminium fin, but unfortunately, the glass... If it's been sealed in, that's going to make it extremely difficult to get access to this, but I shall give it a go. One moment, please. Progress report. I have tried removing some of the sealant at the end. It's just not happening. This glass has been slid in after the circuit board's been screwed onto the back of the heat sink here. So I'm going to tr keep trying, but this glass is proving very difficult to remove. I've already had to tidy up the shards of broken glass from trying to push this out. It is just not sliding. I shall continue. Just give me a moment to see what I can do with this. It may involve glass breakage. Okay, well, that's the glass out. It was somewhat harder than expected. Somehow they managed to glue the glass in the full length. I had to dremel the side of the metal off and then break the adhesion under the glass to get it out. But it's out now. We can continue with the rest of the disassembly. And resume the teardown. I do not know how they got that black strip in there. Was that black strip in there to start with and the o-ring, the white o-ring at the bottom, and then they slid the glass in with maybe some sort of thin sort of thing to let the glass slide in, then they extracted a tape or something. I'm not really sure, but the, it made it extremely difficult. Once the glass is in, it is in. But now, let's take the reflectors out. Each reflector is screwed in by a central screw into the aluminium housing itself. So if I just uh, lift this out, trying not to, well, it's too late to not get my fingers on it. The reflector just is that single screw and it sort of allows it to sit on top of the LEDs. The LEDs are standard one watt, three watt type Luxian style LEDs. I say Luxian, they're not actually Luxian. They're a ripoff of the Luxian, what the Chinese call LED beads. And some initial probing uh, indicates how the wiring's done in this. So these lenses are the wide angle ones and they're different. 
they've got the same sort of housing here, but they've also got a little plastic double lens clipped in that uh, hovers in front of the LED and gives it a different wider angle. I guess it's just to provide a full light. The circuit board is divided into two sections which are effectively connected in parallel for power for the drivers. Uh, there's a driver at one end. If we go down to the other end, there's another driver down here. So let's see if I can take this out. The midpoint of the circuit board, it's kind of a universal design. They've got a couple of pads, maybe it's just for power, but they've got some bus bars going along the full length. On the circuit board it says YF008 LED 120 watts, suggesting, uh, I think it's 40 LEDs in this, suggesting perhaps that they were running it at about, uh, was it about 80 watt? I'm trying to remember now. They were running at 2 watts each. Um, just give me a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 LEDs in each section, 40 LEDs. It was, they were running at about 80 watts. But it has the facility to run these LEDs at the full 3 watts, which would probably shorten their life greatly. As it is, uh, a couple of LEDs on this have failed from probing about. Have I shown you it lit? I don't think I've shown you it lit. I should show you it lit. The bench power supply is on here. We can also do some diagnostics when I uh, do that. There are signs of corrosion. Oddly, these pads are super clean. But where the LEDs are soldered on, there is corrosion. Maybe that's just the flux. The inside is extraordinarily clean and dry, which is surprising, given that this uh, isn't exactly a new fixture. It's been out on a boat, bobbing about in the Irish Sea for quite some time. So I shall take, just off shot, I shall take the last screw out. It's kind of a big thing. Oh, there's a couple of screws. I shall take that one out as well. And then I shall try and get the circuit board out and reverse engineer it. And we shall see what we can find on it, or at least just find what the driver is. It will just be a standard current regulated driver, I guess. Oh, that's it lifting up nicely. It's lifting up. Is there any more hidden screws? Don't want to use too much force. That is glued in there where the cables come in. They've put glue over the end of the cable here. That's presumably to try and uh, prevent water ingress through the cable. So they've actually put resin, hard resin there. This might be tricky. Right? Tell you what, I'm just going to connect power to it so you can see what happens. So it's not the full power, so it's not too dazzling. It's uh, it is just 9 volts, and if I turn the voltage down, you can immediately spot part of the circuitry here. See how these two LEDs are the only two that are lit? They just happen to be next to two resistors in parallel, and they've done that to uh, allow it to... They've got the LEDs as ser series circuits of threes, but these one, they're just two to pack up the number, and they've used resistors to balance that. There is an LED at the end there. Can you see it? Is it going to oblige by flickering? Uh, there's one that is flickering on off here, which, uh, there it goes. Bit of flickering. And that is in series of these other two. The other panel down here lights when it's in the mood, but uh, it spends most of its time not lit. I'm not sure if corrosion has occurred there, uh, because it's affecting all the LEDs. Right, tell you what, I'll get that circuit board out and we shall explore further. Reverse engineering is done, and it's fixed. So let's explore and see what actually went wrong with the section that was out. The circuitry has three parallel Schottky diodes for reverse polarity protection on the negative rail. It has two smoothing capacitors plus a little uh, transient voltage suppressor in here, uh, and they're all in parallel. Uh, it has the chip itself, TB99, which is a buck regulator chip using this MOSFET to actually switch current through this inductor and the LEDs. And these are little, two little parallel flyback diodes. It's got two current sense resistors in parallel. It's got a resistor to set the internal frequency of the chip, and it's got its own little capacitor for a power supply. And after that, the LEDs are in series circuits of three. Let's bring in the doodle. So here's the, the power supply, 12 to 24 volts. Here are the three Schottky diodes. 
in parallel that are designed to protect against reverse polarity. They're the two smoothing capacitors, uh, 47 microfarad, 35 volt and CK56. Not quite sure. I've come across that number before. Didn't I drew a blank on that? I've found data sheet websites which just randomly point at random components that were nothing to do with it, but that's what usually happens. But uh, I've drawn a transient voltage suppressor in there. Here's the chip TB99, notable for a few things. It has that resistor that sets its oscillator, it has a little capacitor, and it sets no matter what you supply it with theoretically up to 500 volts. Not sure about that, but it will generate its own little 7.5 volt supply for internal use. It uses that to switch this MOSFET, which is a CSD50 NO6, and that allows current, when it's turned on, current flows through the LEDs, the large parallel array of LED sections, through this inductor, and in the process of creating the magnetic field in the inductor, that limits the current. When it reaches a certain threshold, these uh, two parallel resistors here, 0.069 ohms when you add them together, uh, when it reaches that, it turns off, the magnetic field in this collapses, when it does so, the current goes through the freewheel diodes here, which are two shortcut diodes in parallel, and it goes through the LED. So it's a very efficient circuit. They claim about 90% efficiency. There are six sets of three series LEDs to make up the panel, plus the two that are the odd number have two resistors, um, 22 ohm resistors, so a total of 11 ohms. So what went wrong with it? Well, this capacitor here went wrong with it. I checked the voltage across the circuit board. Let me bring the circuit board back in and I'll zoom back out. So the unit generates its own internal supply, that chip, for the uh, to power itself. And it has that little uh, capacitor. I can show you on this better. It has that little capacitor there um, that uh, is that supply 7.5 volts. If it goes below 6.7 volts, the thing locks out. It just means it's an under-voltage situation. It'll lock out. The section that was working was showing the correct voltage. This one was showing about 5 volts, so it was locked out. That could have been for various reasons. It could have been that the chip had failed, or the MOSFET gate uh, had failed, uh, allowing current to flow to the sort of zero-volt rail, basically acting like a resistor, which can happen. So I looked at it with a thermal imaging camera to see if anything was giving off a little bit of warmth. And uh, the other main suspect here was the MLCC multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Uh, very notorious these days for failure because they're cramming a lot of capacitance into a small area. Everything's over-miniaturized. And it was showing a little bit of warmth. It was actually roughly the same temperature as the chip, uh, but it was they shouldn't show that. They should be pretty much ambient temperature unless they're stressed. So experimentally, I removed it and it was pretty cruddy underneath. Uh, and I replaced it with just an ordinary uh, Louis SR capacitor. It doesn't need to be Louis SR, but that's just what I had handy. So I put in a 10 megafarad capacitor, and now the whole panel is working again. And the voltage measured across that, well, let's bring the meter in and show you the voltage measured across that. Uh, let's put the meter there. I shall measure the voltage across the other one's capacitor. So let's go onto the common negative circuit negative here and this capacitor. 7.46 volts, that's fine. Uh, and this one is now... Probe, probe, probe. Oh, short it out. Uh, 7.48 volts. So that's absolutely fine. That's a good voltage. So it was one of those pesky little multi-layer ceramic capacitors going resistive again that was basically dragging the circuit down. So uh, there we go. Interesting light. It looks like it's been very waterproof. There is that sign of corrosion inside, but only on the LED solder joints, maybe a sort of metal reaction. And it is fairly lightweight. It's not that bad. I wonder if that's, though, what had affected the uh, MLCC, the capacitor in here. But that's it. Have I, have I got everything here? I think I've covered everything. That little oscillator set resistor, that's more or less it. Yep, so um, that's the... Uh, fishing vessel light uh, given to me by Jiffy from one of the local uh, fishing boats. They do prefer their floodlights because they're much better. It's like that's what the, this bench is lit with. It just provides a better wash of illumination because this thing was definitely designed as a spotlight, so it would have been quite hot spots of light. But there we go. Interesting. Well worth taking apart.